Hi there. Welcome to Christmas in July at the Schwoben's Nest. My name is Sandra, and I'm so glad you're here. The second Trash to Treasure project is using these corks. I'm going to cut them in half using this little junior hacksaw. It's a really fun tool. It's super sharp. And I'm just using some pliers to hold the cork in place because they're just a little bit wiggly and I don't want to get my hands too close to that blade. When you're using corks, you're going to want to make sure that you soak them in some water for at least 10 minutes. I did mine actually for a couple of hours and then I drained out the water, but I kept them covered in a plastic container as you can see here and I put the lid on it and that keeps them nice and moist, prevents them from crumbling and breaking as you're working with them. Next, I'm cutting out a little piece of wood from this garden stake and I'm using my miter shears. This is a new purchase for me. I love these. They're so handy and they, you just have to squeeze it and it just pops off super sharp and you can do all sorts of different angles with that. I will have a link for that down in my description box. I'm just going to hot glue that little piece of wood to the front of this birdhouse and it will become the door. I'm going to start hot gluing the half corks onto the side, back and front of the birdhouse and this will create the effect of a log cabin. Now these corks do have different writing and dates on them and things like that, but I think it's going to add to the character of this piece. I'll be using those miter shears again to make some smaller cuts to fit the corks all around the door and at the peak of the roof. The log cabin portion is finished, but now it needs a roof. I'm using some large popsicle sticks and I've used the miter shears just to cut them in different lengths because I want this to look like shingles on a roof. I'm gonna use hot glue to attach them and go all the way up to the peak. The roof is almost complete. I just need to add a couple of longer strips to cover up the very top. For the trim pieces on the door, I used a large popsicle stick. I cut it in three pieces lengthwise and then measured out how tall I needed these side pieces. And then I'll add three smaller pieces horizontally in the middle. I'm taking some black and brown acrylic paint and a little bit of water to water it down a bit to create somewhat of a painted stain for the roof. So I'm just going to mix these colors together until I get a really nice dark brown and then I'll cover the whole roof with it, including the edges and underneath. Using a red oil-based paint pen, I'm going to give the door a pop of Christmas color. To give it more of an aged and weathered look, I'm going to take the paintbrush that still has a little bit of paint on it from the roof and go over the door. And finally, no log cabin would be complete without a chimney. So I've taken a cork and I've cut it on an angle to fit the roof and I'm just going to hot glue that in place. This will be another perfect addition to my tiered tray decor items. This second project is also a request from the same customer. I am using two of these stone pieces. These are left over from my fireplace when we redid the face of it. I'm going to use these as the bases for these stocking hangers because they're nice and heavy and anything that gets hung on the stocking will stay put. I'm just going to give them one coat top to bottom with black chalk paint. 
using some more pieces of scrap wood, I went out to my table saw and I cut out these tree shapes. I'm doing one tree with three sections and the other tree with two sections. I'm just going to give them a couple of coats of white chalk paint. Once they were dry, it was time to put all the pieces together. Of course, I'm using my weld bond glue because that is a permanent hold and it sticks to ceramic, tile, wood, glass, you name it. This is the all purpose glue that you need for permanent projects. I needed to figure out a way that I could put the hook onto these stone pieces. I couldn't drill into the stone. So what I'm doing is just tapping a nail into these little blocks that come from the Dollar Tree. And then I'm going to screw in these eye hooks that I actually pulled apart with my needle nose pliers to make just some really nice sturdy hooks. I'm going to glue them to the stone pieces first, and then I'm going to go over it with some black chalk paint. And because her inspiration pieces were not distressed, I'm not going to be doing any distressing on these trees, but I still think they turned out absolutely gorgeous. My first project for you today is using one of these Dollar Tree frames. I'm going to remove the back, but hang on to it because I'm going to need it later. I've got a red and black buffalo check piece of scrapbook paper, and I'm just going to use my craft knife to cut around the outside of the backing, and that will give me what I need for inside the frame. Using a glue stick to cover the backing, I'm going to attach the paper and smooth it out. If you wanted, you didn't even need to glue this on. You could just place it inside the frame and then switch it out every year with a different paper. Put the frame back in the glass and then we're going to work on embellishing the front. I picked up these wooden Christmas trees at my Dollarama store. They carried a whole bunch of different shapes that are much thicker wood, small like this, perfect for embellishing a frame. I'm simply going to hot glue the two smaller ones to the outside and put a larger one on the inside. Once that's done, I've got a wooden star that came in a different pack, but they're the same type as the trees. I'm going to cover the top of it with the buffalo check paper, and I'm just going to use a glue stick. But this time I'm going to put the paper on top of the star and then use my craft knife to cut out the angles. I'm going to glue the star to the top of the frame, and this craft is complete. Quick easy and super cute. My second project for you today is using one of these Dollar Tree signs. The first thing I'm going to do is just take a piece of regular printer paper and glue it into the inside just to make sure that I can cover up that comfort and joy words. They're really dark with the glitter, but I didn't want to take the time to sand off any of the glitter because then it just gets all over the place. Now I'm going to do the same thing with this piece of green and white buffalo check paper. I created this on my computer and a free printable will be available on my website. My link is down in the description box. I found these rounded squares at the Dollar Tree, so I'm going to take one and cover it top to bottom with some white chalk paint. I'm going to make sure I do the edges as well because you will see that. I'm not going to worry about the back though because that's going to be glued onto my sign. I found this beautiful ribbon at the Dollar Tree. It looks like burlap, but it's really soft and these white snowflakes are just so adorable. So what I'm going to do is just cut some strips and then using hot glue, I'm going to glue one across as you see me doing here and then I'm going to flip it and do one across again, just making a cross pattern on it so it looks like a present. Now I'm simply going to glue the present onto the sign. 
Once that's done, I'm just going to make a shoestring bow with a little bit more of the ribbon and glue it onto the top of the present. And this turns out super cute and so easy to do. The last detail for this sign, just to make it look a little bit more finished, was to take some of my hunter green paint and just do the edges. Nothing else, just make sure that I just get the edges, not even the back, all the way around the sign. And it just took it up another level and made it look a little bit nicer. For this project, I grabbed a couple of these ornaments from the Dollar Tree. I'm only going to use one of them. So I'm just gonna put the other aside and I'm gonna take that same hunter green paint that I used on the border of the green sign and I'm gonna give this a really good coat. Just one coat will do, but I just put it on a little bit thicker in some spots to make sure I covered up all of that glitter. The last time I went to the Dollar Tree, I was at a totally different store that I had not been to in a really long time. And I found one of these tart pans or bottle caps or whatever you want to call them. Anyhow, I was so excited to find one. What I'm going to do is take some black and white buffalo check paper and I'm going to put that on the bottom of this little tart bottle cap. Again, I'm just using a glue stick, but I'm just gonna make sure that I get all of the edges really well because I want them to stick. In order to fit the tree into the pan, I did have to trim off some of the branch at the bottom, and then I just used some hot glue and placed it right in the center. Using a small brush with a little bit of white paint, I'm just gonna dab over the ends of these little branches. I don't wanna cover the whole thing, I just want the tips of them to be white. I also painted the tree trunk brown just with some burnt umber acrylic paint. I added a red berry to the top of the tree and made a hanger from black and white gingham ribbon. I also hot glued some snow to the bottom of the pan. And this is another super cute and super easy DIY. Next, I'm going to use this little canvas from the Dollar Tree. I found this gorgeous red ribbon at Michael's, so I'm going to use that to frame out the sign just to cover up the canvas because then I don't have to bother taking it off. And this turns out really sweet. I just love the effect of this. When I get to the top all the way around again, I'm going to create a little loop and that will be used for hanging the sign. I cut off the excess and then turned the ribbon onto itself as you see me doing here and hot glued it into place. The picture in the frame is gonna be this adorable vintage Santa that I found on Pixabay. I'll have that linked down in my description box as well. So I'm just going to cut him out and size him to the inside of the canvas. I wanted the Santa picture to kind of slide inside the frame and so I just kind of fiddled with it until I figured out how to get it. And you just kind of bend your paper a little bit and then push it in towards the top and then the bottom just kind of falls into place. I am going to tack it down with a little bit of hot glue. Next, I grabbed a couple different sizes of the cubes you can get at the Dollar Tree, and I painted the smaller ones green and the larger ones red. I'm going to then use my chalk marker and another permanent marker to create the little crosses on them that signify the ribbon. These were a little too small to actually add real ribbon, and I didn't have any baker's twine that would do the trick.
Once the little gifts were dry, I hot glued them into the one corner of the sign. I kind of staggered them a little bit and I added one on the top, a little kitty wampus, and then I decided to paint up another one and put that one a little bit on an angle as well. Then I added little bits of greenery and a couple of jingle bells and this sign is done. Project number five is using this Dollar Tree sign. This is found in the wedding section and they normally carry these year round. Now I went ahead and I painted it a few times with my DIY chalk paint, but at the end of it all, you could still see the outline of those reception letters. So if you wanna paint it, then I would suggest doing a little bit of sanding and making it really nice and smooth. I have a bunch of little wooden trees. Some of them came from the Dollar Tree, some of them came from Dollarama. What I'm doing is just trimming off the little star shape on the top, just making a point on each of the trees. I wanted to have five different shapes of trees, but I didn't have any others besides the two you see down there. So I took a wooden star and I cut down some of the sides on it so it would just be a triangle and you can see here I'm just using my box cutter to just go ahead and score and cut through all the way. These wooden pieces are super easy to get through. They're from the Dollar Tree or Dollarama and they're not as thick as some of the other ones that you can find. So I'm just going to do this for two of the trees. Once that was done, I took three different colors of acrylic paint and I'm dipping my brush into some water first so I get more of a stain or a washed effect on the trees. I didn't want them to be a solid color. I'm also making sure that I get all around the edges and I'm going to do the backs as well. I figured out how I wanted my trees to stick out off from this sign. And now I'm just gonna use some hot glue and then glue them to the back. So I'm starting with this beautiful one in the center. I'm gonna do the just the regular angled ones on either end. And then I'm gonna put the two smaller ones on the top. So you can just follow along as I'm doing this. For the little trees at the front, you saw me take my miter shears and I just trimmed off the trunk. As I said earlier, you could still see the word reception. So I'm taking some of this scrapbook paper and I'm going to just use my glue stick and glue it right onto the sign. I'm also going to add a little end of the arrow because my paper wasn't long enough. I'm just going to put that on and then use my craft knife to trim off all the extra edges. When you're crafting, sometimes things just don't work out as you planned, so you just have to go with the flow. Using a small paintbrush and some white paint, I'm just going to go around the edges like this to make it look like they're kissed with a little bit of snow. The last part of this project is to go ahead and add some words. So I'm going to write the words Christmas tree farm. I'm just going to freehand it, and give it a little bit of quirky letters. I'm gonna do Christmas in more of a cursive font, and then I'll add a few other details down at the bottom. You can also see that I painted the brown legs on this. I used burnt umber and I just gave it a little bit of a dry brush so the little posts that hold the sign up would look like little tree trunks. If you're not good at doing freehand, there are tons of different ways that you can add font to your projects. I have a tissue paper printable tutorial down in my description box. So that would be a really easy way to put some lettering on here. Just print it off on tissue paper and put it on with some Mod Podge. The tissue paper blends right into the paper or any of your project and you don't even notice that it's there. You could also just print it off on regular paper and scratch the back with some pencil and then go over it with a pen on the front to leave a pencil line on your project and then go over it with marker that way.
my first project for you today is inspired by those beautiful little cloth reindeer that you can see out in the stores and on Pinterest. This is a piece of buffalo check fabric that I grabbed at Walmart and I've got it folded in half and this is the wrong side. So I'm going to take my marker and I'm just going to freehand the body shape of a reindeer. I'm going to go up for his little tail a little bit and then I'm going to also then just go around, not make anything fancy. It's basically a rounded rectangle with a head and a tail. When I was cutting it out, I left a good quarter of an inch of a seam allowance all along the edges. Although I'm not going to be sewing this, I'm going to just use hot glue, but I want to make sure that I have enough fabric to make a nice size reindeer so if I go along on the marker lines it's going to be quite small so I wanted to make sure he was fairly big in size. If you have a sewing machine you could easily just do a nice stitch all the way around leaving a little portion open so you can stuff it. I decided just to use some hot glue. At the back by his little tushy, we're going to leave that space open because that's going to give us the ability to turn it right side out and then stuff it. When you're turning things right side out and you've used hot glue as your seam, you need to be really careful that you don't accidentally pull it apart. Of course, it can be re-glued again, but you just want to take your time, be gentle with it and make sure that you don't open up too many of the seams. For the stuffing, I'm using a Walmart bed pillow that I picked up for $4. It's their cheapest ones and they're fantastic to use for projects. What I'm going to do now is again very gently push the stuffing in in small pieces and I'm also going to use a dowel to help me get it up to where his head is and in any of the little corners. He's all stuffed and I'm just going to use some hot glue to close the seam. To add the antlers, all I'm going to do is take my scissors and snip a tiny little hole on either side of his head. Now I've decided to use these little branches that I cut off from a maple tree in my backyard because I just thought those little buds looked like perfect little antlers coming out. And I'm going to take some hot glue, push it into the hole, and then I will just add the antler in and secure it a little bit more with some extra hot glue. I'm using some sticks for his legs and I'm going to use the same concept. Cut a tiny little hole, push some hot glue into it and then wiggle the branch up and into the hole and it will stick right onto the hot glue. The last thing he needs is some ears. I'm taking a piece of this buffalo check ribbon that was a little bit of scrap and I'm cutting out somewhat of an oval shape and then at the bottom, I'm going to use some hot glue and pinch the two ends together. This last this last project is probably my favorite of the three, although I gotta say those reindeer were pretty darn cute. This is the bottom of a gift box and I've just torn apart the edges and I'm gonna cut off the excess. I'm going to make my own cone just by folding it and bending it until I get the desired shape. And then I'm just going to roll it and use hot glue to keep it in place. You could also use a styrofoam cone or a metal or plastic cone, whatever you happen to have on hand would work fine. I'm using hot glue on the seam to hold it all together. I'm cutting off the point because I'm going to want to glue a pine cone to the top so I'll need it flat and then I'm also going to trim the bottom flat and make sure that it can stand totally straight. I'm going to be using these white pine cones to create a Christmas tree. These are a garland door hanger that I picked up at Dollarama. I have a couple of these and I also needed to go grab some other pine cones and spray paint them white so I would have enough to go all the way to the top. Before I start gluing on the pine cones, I'm going to add some burlap to it. It's going to do 
two things. The first thing is it's going to camouflage that white poster board. And the second thing is it's going to really help those pine cones to stick because hot glue sticks really well to burlap. Because it's a cone shape, I'm gonna have to do some trimming, but that's okay, you won't be able to see any of those seams. So here's my cone. I have it sitting on top of a little bottle of Mod Podge so those bottom pine cones won't be resting on the table. I'm going to put a generous amount of hot glue and then I'm going to start at the very bottom and go all the way around the bottom of the cone. If any of the large pine cones have that stem down at the bottom, you're going to want to trim that away. The bottom should be as flat as possible to make sure that it sticks properly. The second row will be glued opposite to the first row, so you have sort of a brick lay pattern. You don't want to put them in a line because then you'll have more of the burlap showing. Don't worry about the gaps that you see in the burlap in between the large pine cones. We're going to fix that in a minute. Our Dollar Tree doesn't usually have these little mini pine cones. So when I found them, I grabbed, I think, six bags of each. I was a little pine cone piggy. So I apologize to anybody who came shopping behind me at that store and wanted to get some because I think I bought them all out. Anyhow, I've got some frosted ones and I've got some plain ones. I'm going to use these tiny ones as my filler pieces. And I'm going to start fitting them in between the cracks in between all of the large pine cones. So here's the top of my cone. I still have some filling to do, but I'm going to be adding this really large one at the very top. And that's why I had that cone cut straight across because I want this pine cone to sit nice and straight right on top of it. I'm going to continue using these little frosted pine cones to fill in all of the burlap. I really love how this is starting to take shape. To add a little bit more extra color and texture I'm taking some of the natural colored pine cones and filling them in different spots around the tree. Down at the bottom there are still some gaps in between the large white pine cones so I'm taking some of these medium sized natural pine cones. I believe I had these last year and they were part of a filler package so I'm just going to take some hot glue and glue those on. To keep this tree looking rustic, I'm using an old two x four and a couple of wood slices that have a screw put through them from the bottom to the top. And I'm cutting a piece of floral foam that I'm just going to stick right onto the screw. And then I will put the cone right on top of that. I'm going to make sure that it's wedged in there really nice and tight. My first project for you today is using this wooden pizza paddle that I picked up at my local Dollarama store. A couple of weeks ago, I finally invested in a Cricut Joy and I couldn't be happier. I'm going to be able to still create all of my own designs, but the great thing about it is I'm going to be able to make them into free printables for all of my viewers and subscribers. So I'm really excited to be able to share all of that with you. I did find these three trees on pixabay.com and I will put a free printable down in my description box. I'm going to add the words Merry and Christmas and I'm doing this all in the Cricut vinyl simply because this was my very first project that I attempted and I wanted to make sure that I knew what I was doing. I'm sealing this with a coat of Mod Podge because it's going to be hanging on my front door. It's not going to get wet elements on it but it will be pretty cold right at the front door so I want to make sure that nothing peels off. I decided to add some embellishments to the top of the handle and I'm using some lamb's ear leaves and some pine and some berries and I'm just going to create a design that is appealing to me and hot glue everything into place. 
I'm using some of the jute rope as a hanger and I fed both pieces into the front of the sign and then tied a big fat knot as you can see here and that will allow the loop to be at the back and hanging nice and flat against the door. I really love how this turned out and I think it looks absolutely fabulous against the white of my front door. The last project that I have for you today is using an old jar. This happens to be a salsa jar. And this is a piece of fabric that I got at Walmart. I believe they're called Fat Quarters. They're 18 inches by 18 inches. And it's this beautiful red buffalo check. I've measured out what I need and it's just enough to go from the top ridge to the bottom ridge on the jar and then all the way around the jar. Now, one thing I wanna mention here is I've got my fabric scissors that I'm using. It's really important when you are crafting to have the appropriate tools for the job. I don't ever use regular scissors on fabric because it ends up being really choppy and they just aren't sharp enough. So these fabric scissors I use only for material, nothing else. My piece of fabric is now cut and I want to make sure that when I fold it over I'm going to come together on exactly the same seam. So this is going to work out perfectly. I've cut it exactly how I need it and then that seam will actually just disappear. Before I attach the fabric to the jar, I wanted to do a little bit something different. I'm taking a tiny little piece of cardstock and I'm just going to freehand a little Christmas tree that I'm going to cut out and use as a template. I'm going to trace out the Christmas tree on each of the four black squares that are right in the middle of the fabric. I'm going to just use a fine tip marker and make sure that I trace out on the wrong side of the fabric. So here I am using these tiny little scissors to cut out these tiny little trees. It's again really important to have the proper tools. You can find these types of scissors in the manicure aisle. They are actually a little pair of nail scissors. They're super sharp and they're perfect for tiny little detailed cutting like this. I'm using Mod Podge to put the fabric on the jar and I'm also going to spritz down the fabric with a little bit of water to make it a little easier to work with. Since the Mod Podge is wet and the fabric will be wet, then I'll have a lot more time to work with the fabric and make sure it's on properly. If I leave the fabric dry, it's going to stick really quickly and absorb the Mod Podge and I won't have any working time. Now I can take my time working out any of the bubbles, moving the fabric around if I need to, and making sure that everything is stuck properly before it dries. I'm also using a little cloth just to dab off the excess Mod Podge where the Christmas tree is, but that's gonna leave sort of a film on the glass, which ends up looking really cute at the end. When you get around to the end piece, you wanna just put a thin layer of Mod Podge right on top of the fabric that's already there. Again, spritz your fabric and then lay it down and make sure it's nice and straight. To make the jar look a little bit more finished, I'm gonna use a couple layers of twine on the top and the bottom where the fabric ends. I'll just secure that with hot glue a few times around. I'm going to be adding a little bit of greenery and some frosted pine cones from the Dollar Tree to make this look a little bit more festive. The jar looks pretty cute on its own, but I decided to add some Epsom salts into the bottom portion of it just to make it look like snow. And then I'm going to add a tea light. I hope 
This sign is made out of two pieces of scrap wood. I had a 10 inch wide piece of plywood. I wanted to make an 18 inch round. So what I did was take it out to my jigsaw and cut two half circles, as you see here. And now I'm going to glue them together. Of course, I'm using my weld bond glue because that is the best ever. I'm adding some extra glue because this is just rough cut plywood and the seams don't blend together really tightly. I'm also going to be using some painter sticks and making this extra supportive. I'm just going to cut them to size because I don't need them as long as they are. So I'm just going to cut down that little curved piece using my miter shears. Now these miter shears are amazing, but these paint stir sticks are really tough. So what I do is I squish down as hard as I can. I make a mark and then I flip it around and just keep cutting in the same area until I have an opportunity to just snap off the end. I'm going to start by adding more of my weld bond glue, but I'm also going to use some hot glue so I can continue working on my project while the weld bond glue sets. I'm going to flip the sign over and add some extra weld bond glue to the seam on the front as well. I'm using some wood filler to fill in the seam and make it more smooth. There's also a knot here that had quite a bit of a chunk missing out of it, so I'm going to fill that in as well. Once the wood glue was dry, I was afraid that the color of it would seep through the white that's going to be right on this seam, so I did take some of the dry decks spackle. I put a decent amount on the side where the seam is and also the top and now I'm just sanding it smooth. To help get off the excess dust you can just use a damp rag. I just happen to have a baby wipe on hand so I'm just using that to clean up the sign and make sure that there isn't anything that will interfere with applying the paint. So if any of you are wondering why I did the wood filler and the spackle, this is why. I cut my half circles a little bit wonky on one side, so I want to use that side as where the bow and the embellishments are going to be, so I had to turn the sign this way. And I wanted to make sure that when I paint it, it's not going to have any of the wood filler showing through. Here I'm just masking off where the white space on the sign is going to be just using some painter's tape. This piece of plywood is fairly rough. You can see the grooves in it. I want to make sure that I get all of the paint in all of the cracks. So for this first coat, I'm going to go side to side across my project. For the second coat, I'm going to go up and down. And that's just going to ensure that I'm going to get complete full coverage with two coats. That's something you can do on all of your projects. It doesn't just have to be with wood. And that is what I do. If I'm going to be distressing something, I just make sure that the brush strokes are in the right direction for when I want to add some distress lines. Other than that, I just switch my direction for each coat. The inspiration for this came from a customer. I'm making this sign for her and the bottom and the top of the sign that she wanted were stained with like a dark walnut stain. Now, because I put spackle on here and there's two pieces joined together, I don't have the opportunity to just give this a quick stain. I have to do something different. So I'm going to do a faux wood technique, which is starting off with a white base. And once this is dry, I'll be going on it with another color. So this is the technique that I learned from another YouTuber a couple of years ago, and it works really well. I'm using a rough brush, the roughest one you have. This is my little chippy brush, and I'm using a very light touch. The stain I'm using is just an Americana gel stain in dark walnut, and I'm brushing it on very lightly because I want to see all of the brush strokes. I've done this wood stain technique on jars, on plates, on other wood pieces. So when you do it like this with the white background first, you have all sorts of options to create fake wood stain. Here's a close up 
look of what the faux wood stain looks like. I think it's an amazing way to do wood if it's not a wood project or the wood itself is not really a good one to use. Look at all those lines and brush strokes. It's perfect. This last section of wood is going to be painted red. I'm using the color Romance from Americana Decor Chalk Paint. I went to my Cricut and I designed a Merry Christmas the way the inspiration photo is, but I wanted to save on vinyl. So I ended up splitting the word Christmas into two words so I could get it a little bit closer together. I'm kind of frugal when it comes to vinyl because it is a little expensive and I want to make sure I can use every little bit of those sheets. So I'm just going to use some painter's tape and tape the two pieces of backing together and then I'll go ahead and use my transfer tape to put it on the sign. Another way to save when you're using some vinyl is to use the transfer tape from the dollar stores. Now this is just regular clear contact paper and it works really really well. It doesn't have a huge amount of stick which is awesome because then it doesn't tear off any of your paint. I'm going to lay this down towards the bottom of the white portion of the sign because I still have the word Mary to put on top. As usual, I'll have this available as a free printable on my website. If you are new to that, there are instructions in my description box on how to access this. If you are new to my channel, I would love it if you could hit that red subscribe button. It really helps support my channel and helps me grow. Now we're going to move on to decorating the sign, but first I've got to make my little picks. So I'm taking some of these red piperis and I'm just going to be cutting them down and gluing a few of them together. And then I'm going to add some additional round holly berries to make this look a little bit more like a strand of berries. Then I'm going to add a few leaves of boxwood and that will be my pick. Now comes the bow making part. If you've watched my channel before, you know, number one, I'm not really a bow fan. I'm actually moving over to that side though, because I think they're starting to look pretty cute. I'm just gonna take some of this Buffalo check ribbon, fold it over a few times, and then pinch it in the center and put it together with a pipe cleaner or chenille stem, whatever you wanna call it. I'm going to get four loops on each side. I actually didn't create four loops on each side. I had four on one side and three on the other. So I decided to take that center one, kind of fold it down a little bit, and then hot glue it into place so it would be the center loop of the bow. I haven't quite mastered using two types of ribbon to create a bow, so I decided to just cut down a few pieces of this Buffalo Check ribbon from Dollar Tree and glue them onto the bows just to give a little bit more texture and color to the bow. I'm using two more pieces of the thicker Buffalo Check ribbon. I'm going to dovetail the ends, which means I'm going to fold it in half, and then I'm going to take my scissors and cut from the center down to the points, and that creates a nice little V in my tails. I'm then going to just hot glue them to the back of the ribbon. I also used a little dot of hot glue to pinch the ribbon together to give it a little bit more texture and then I'm going to glue it onto the actual pipe cleaner stem on the back of the ribbon. I'm going to cut two more pieces of the buffalo check ribbon in the red and black, make some dovetailed ends on those and then just glue them and tuck them right underneath the bow so I have two little red tails on top of the other ones. Since this is a really nice solid piece of wood, I decided to use my staple gun to attach everything to it. I'm going to put a few staples in each one and I'm going to do three on either side, kind of placed in the same directions. And then I'm going to add the bow also with some staples. And then I'm going to add just a few little sprigs of boxwood and some berries in between the tails.
I hope you enjoyed these Christmas projects and got some inspiration to start thinking about Christmas in July. Thanks so much for watching. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one.